Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining in another episode with I am Metro Cloud. I am your host, Adnan. And this new series of podcasts have been asked many times on many different social media is about how to start a career in the field of cloud, how to become a cloud engineer, how to become a cloud architect. So I have another guest. You have seen it already in the past, but this time you want to make sure you walk away with those answers, but not only those people with no experience, people with experience also what the industry and whatever SME seeing in the market. So I welcome again, Dan Hendricks. He's from Netherlands and I'll let him introduce himself. Hey, Dan, over to you. Adnan, it's nice to speak to you again. It's always nice seeing your name. I'm Adnan Hendricks, the other one. <laughs> Based in the Netherlands, I work as a cloud architect, consultant, trainer, and daily I help companies move to cloud and work with the cloud estates. And I also help people try and get into cloud by training and workshops and those sort of things. So, so you've been doing pretty much Microsoft cloud, right? And I'm, I'm with the Azure cloud. Yes. Azure cloud. And you recently again, maintain and retain your MVP nomination. Correct. You've been awarded again, correct? Fortunately I have, I still have to see how it's going to be this coming year. You okay. know, as being a past MVP yourself, you never know. So yeah, let's start with that. Like how MVP helped you grow and what are the, some benefits? Well, just to get into it, it's, it's all about learning yourself and, and sharing what you know, right? The, the benefits is you're always in contact with some of the brightest minds in the industry. Uh, you meet a lot of people that are way smarter and intelligent than yourself. A lot of people work for Microsoft and are in the product teams. So especially this week right now, there's the MVP summit, which is happening where MVPs get invited to have our own little conference and Microsoft tells us a lot of things. And yeah, that we can share. Yeah. yeah. So I remember that. That's why, that's why I look so tired. So yeah, I know. And that's what that reminds me when we met in the Seattle. So. Let's start with those questions. Like, you know, as I said, you know, somebody who wants to, who wants to become a cloud engineer or architect, where would they start from basically? Well, it all depends. If it's somebody that's starting as a IT professional, let's say with some experience or somebody straight off school that has some IT experience, you know, working with computers or an affinity to want to learn, you know, the IT field. There's a lot of things that that person can do. Well, obviously being someone like myself, I'm not going to talk about going into tertiary education, like university or something, uh, like we did and wasted a lot of time with cloud. It's, it's, it's fairly simple. There's a lot of routes that you can take, for example, for somebody that has the time and effort can just go to the Microsoft Learn website and read up on their cloud things. I know AWS and Google Cloud have similar documentation and events and trainings that are free online. So with Microsoft Learn, there's a whole track where you can start into just getting the foundation level of information on what you need to know to be able to get around within the Azure cloud, like some of the services that you can use, for example, how you could create virtual machines, websites, databases, etc. And then there's more tracks that, and trainings that you can take to get more intermediate, slightly more advanced experience, for example, such as an administrator role would do. Mm -hmm. And that's just a cloud engineer in most companies. So ideally from experience, normal IT professionals that have some IT profession experience, so they've worked in IT with on-premises environments. Sometimes the basic requirement for them to get into a cloud engineer role would be the Azure foundation level cert certification. I always recommend people to go for a certification in products, depending on their own experience level. So if okay. you good in windows server take the windows server exam mm -hmm. you know stick to what you know to get a cert as soon as you can because 
even in moving, moving to a cloud role, you're still going to be working with virtual machines, Windows servers in Azure, in the cloud. Right. And then all you need to know is just how does it work in that environment. So basically what we're saying, get on the product path, certification path. So how about you mentioned tertiary education? So that's not important, right? That's not relevant. What customer or the employers are looking for some skill set basically? It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's not relevant, but you know, things change so fast. And if you want to get into a technical job, hands-on, you need to learn hands-on, you know, and, and if you're going to be signing up to a tertiary education, to do a degree, for example, in IT, by the time you finished, the world would have moved on. We will, you know, just using Azure as an example. Mm -hmm. It changes rapidly every three to six months, something new. And uh, I'd suggest getting to it as fast as you can and keep learning. So, but at the same time, what you're saying, you cannot ignore the bachelor's degree. That was my question, right? You cannot no, no, ignore no. it. No, definitely okay. not. Definitely okay. not. Because, you know, much like us, you know, we, we don't just do technical roles. We also right. sometimes do leadership roles within right. projects where we have to work with people. Right. And ideally with, with management skills, you need that degree. If your ambition is to move to management mm -hmm. or be a CEO of a company or any C-level technical role, leadership skills. Right. So, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, we have a lot of social media and buzzword going on, especially, you know, if you look at the social media all mm -hmm. over, but especially in the U.S., people are like, you know, you don't need college degree, which is fine some to some to an extent. But again, mm -hmm. you cannot ignore the fact that you just main, mentioned technology is changing and uh, you, it doesn't have to be a computer science degree. It could be some management, whichever, but it's got to be a combination yeah. because moving forward, if you yeah. wanted to grow in your career, but yes, at the beginning, if you do not have mm -hmm. tuition fee, if you do not plan, so at least mm -hmm. get the hands-on learning skill, go to the definitely. certification path, but maybe two years later, you definitely still want to consider a form of a degree aligning with your skill set and your job role. So tell me what does a cloud engineer basically do? What's a day in the life of a cloud well, engineer? A day in the life of a cloud engineer, if I can talk about some of the guys that I work with and also some of the work that I sometimes do is an, a typical uh, engineer will start his day pretty much like on-premises back in the day, we have certain protocols and, and things to, to follow. So like, let's say you'll do some checks for backups. Most of the time you would have automated a lot of features, functionality, and also controls. So checking dashboards, emails to see if anything came up, any major alerts or high impact incidents. So I'm more talk, talking about the day-to-day -day control. Mm -hmm. So you'll go and check everything up and running, right. any services, because remember we, we've moved from an on-premises role that's managed to where we're working in the cloud environment. So that's managed by a cloud provider. So you also want to know that everything's working on their side. So whether it's Microsoft 365. We want to know that there's nothing impacting Teams or Exchange Online or any other services that you might be using for Microsoft 365. And then with Azure, you'd be checking if everything's running okay with any of those services that might be impacting your environment and also things that would need to be modified. And depending on whatever requests there are for you to create, depending on the type of organization, whether you are, you know, physically creating things for your end clients within the business, mm -hmm. or sometimes you maybe create automation so that people within the business can go and select whatever they need. For example, in the project, sometimes you have developers that need to develop some sort of system. Mm -hmm. So they need certain infrastructure, right. uh, virtual machines a database and maybe connections to some other data points in the environment. So you will just provide them with the tools so they can just provision those themselves. And that's where we just set up things in a template so that people can just click on a button and get those things that they need. Right. 
and there are different categories of jobs. So somebody who just started with basic and get a job, but again, they will learn on the job, which the next direction they want to move on, like SaaS, which is you just mentioned about Microsoft mm-hmm. 365, is pretty much SaaS. And I, in my experience on the social media, I've seen people not knowing much about it. People usually mm-hmm. know about infrastructure as a service. They always talk yes. about spinning up VMs and all that. But SaaS, Microsoft products, I think it's a niche market where we mm-hmm. have been working a lot on those uh, security compliance and mm-hmm. exchange and teams, the whole different yards, right? It's a whole career path. Yeah. So those are three different career paths one can take. These things we need to talking about somebody who has already has a couple of years of experience, right? Somebody may be working as system administrator for the last five years, somebody network engineer. So what do you think along those lines, if you wanted to share with? Well, you know, I always think that it's easier for people with experience because they have the experience. They've proven that they're now to work in an IT environment. Also, they have some sort of certification and tertiary education that lines up. So it's a lot easier for them to just get taken into a role. A lot of the projects that I work in is where a on-premises company might want to migrate to Azure. What I do is partially my role, and I would also coach, help train some of the staff, you know, with the things that they need to apply in the new role. For example, like I said, this guy's working as a systems engineer, or you have a networking engineer, and then all I need to show them how they can apply the existing knowledge to how it works in Azure. For okay. example, we don't we don't need to configure physical devices in Azure anymore for networking. We just do software defined networking. So I'll show them that they can use the same skills and just utilize it in the software defined networking that Azure provides. And then I show them what sort of networking services, how those were in in Azure in accordance to how they would do it on premises, you know. So just to speed up that learning curve. Adnan Right now, I can say there's there's a lot of shortage here in the Netherlands. I, I I speak to a lot of guys in other countries as well, like in the UK, even in the States. I believe mm-hmm. there's always work. So something, can you also share somebody who's starting new? What would you recommend? Not the certification, tell us some skills they got to have can lend them a job. But that's the most of the question I also get all the time. I look for character, you know, is the energy of somebody, you know, you, you gotta have, you, you gotta have to want to do it, you know, okay. you, you, the what desire is- to do the kind of work also not to be scared to fail. The nice thing about Azure and the work that we do in the cloud, like we, we put in a lot of controls, right? We, we try to govern the risks that uh, juniors or other IT professionals to minimize something going wrong. So to minimize the impact, because remember, it's a, it's a different mind shift when you move to the cloud, Mm -hmm. normally with on-premises environments, you're working on existing hardware. So there's no real major cost involved to deploy certain resources, right? But in the cloud, you know, with one mistake could be spending a lot of money versus the money that you should be spending X amount, uh, for example. So what we do is we, we put in policies and controls to make sure that somebody can't really make a mistake on the role that they are assigned. And some of the technical skills that someone would have is really just normal IT skills. We'll train somebody on the job. And if that person has the foundation knowledge in Azure, all you need to understand is how generic services work and we talk about infrastructure as a service, some of the platform as a service, and this is just the standard stuff that people use. Like once you know how Azure SQL works, applying another, that knowledge to another database as a service typed on Azure Mm -hmm. is a lot simpler than not knowing anything at all. Just understanding some of the core basics, like the core Azure services, for example, and understanding how the cloud works in a hybrid mode, for example, identity, Mm -hmm. uh, security, which is a lot of the work that I also help the companies with right now is how they can also secure the Azure estates. Now let's talk about 
along the line of business? Like what are the challenges? And I think you just touch upon identity. Well, you, you always have to start with the de- identity. I mean, obviously there's a lot of extra yes. stuff as well. Working in a cloud environment, you know, we, we have a lot of the similar challenges that we used to have traditionally, you know, where the workforce is, where the work happens, where the need to get data access. And also it's not just your company. It's what your company is always in partnership with vendors or other partners that need to either do something for you, or you need to do something for them. And there's always some sort of collaboration, right? So back in the day, it was quite complicated to get that collaboration on an IT level working, but nowadays with cloud identities, we can just collaborate much easier by just inviting people into your identity provider, which is Azure AD. And it's, it's a lot easier just to add in those kind of partners or connect their companies, especially if they are running some sort of Microsoft 365, Office 365 with an Azure AD identity themselves. We could just do either business to business connection, plain simple, inviting them as guests into the Azure AD tenant of the company. Okay. And then it's just like any other employee working internally, you could share information. They can take part in, you know, team messages, a lot like we doing right now, right. or just collaborate a lot easier, you know, immediately have access to, to data. And the nice thing is with the comprehensive suite of tools within Azure AD, there's security controls with identity protection and much like just controlling things with internally, you can control the data and the access with the guests. So, yeah, I mean. For well, the business is definitely, cloud is much easier, as you just mentioned about business to business connectivity, other than the enterprise, a lot of new businesses, mm-hmm. the startups, you name it, for them, in my opinion, cloud only model works perfect because you don't have to have any on-premises data center, any hardware mm-hmm. storage. They don't have to worry about storage, network, router, switching, and with the supply demand issue, you know, there are three months, six month backlog if you order any hardware and servers. So if a company really wants to grow fast, mm-hmm. cloud is the way to go. On top of that, when it comes to security, data security mm-hmm. and all that, it all comes built in with the native security tools. So those are the benefits. And this is where, going back to your previous point, you mentioned the job growth because mm-hmm. companies are adopting more and more yeah. to the cloud because easy to set up, easy to run. And the people with the right skill set you know, they will always have a job. For, for startups and people trying to get into industry, I do a company in a day workshop where basically in half the day, I can show them mm-hmm. you have all the infrastructure needed to run a company, to create a, the infrastructure, to sell your product, to develop your products, for example. And uh, that's going quite well. And people are amazed to see that a lot of things that used to take months, they can have within the end of the day up and running. And then all they need to do is just fill their web shop or design their product or startup ideas. And uh, what are the other best practices for a mid-sized, small-sized company? What are some top recommendation, best recommendation you would want it to give? Because eventually it's also going to, someone who is, wants to become a cloud engineer, they will see, okay, these are skills mm-hmm. that they need to have. Ideally, it's all about understanding architecture at the end of the day, if you're looking at the, the bigger picture. So it's not just about doing one thing. So you need to have a focus of architecture for one, best practice leading to different, how different kinds of services interoperate with one another. So that's very important, especially in understanding networking and then security, always security, you know, so especially if you want to start, you want to start off the right way. Make sure that you don't get hacked on day one, because I can assure you that because the public IP ranges for Azure is pretty much known publicly, it's on the internet, you can download it on the Microsoft website. And a lot of these IP addresses are constantly being controlled and checked by hackers to make sure that they check if there's something there and they hack it, you know, can they guess do a brute force hack with the 
guessing the username, password, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. The first best practice advice I'd give is get the security right. And that's things as simple as setting up security defaults, things like MFA, uh, that sort of thing, right. and all the basic security control. So yeah, so we mentioned any company who wants to go towards Cloud Journey, first they got to involve a vendor or person like you who can on a high level help them guide it. And when it comes to the hardest skills, basically network security or tenant security. Definitely, definitely. Because like you said, it is, there's different approaches. Well, it's the same approach, it's just different applications, depending on whether it's a, a really small company or a large enterprise, right? Where like, let's say a small company, one location, one tenant versus international company or multinational company with lots of different office locations. So then right. you. I'll, I'll go back to where I mentioned networking. It all depends on how you're going to get from your workforce to the cloud. Are you working over internet or you're working over dedicated clients? So that's just where those kind of differences come in, you know, on the technical level, yeah. depending on the large the organization, the, the more you're going to look at how can you connect your workforce to where the resources will be running, how they will be managing those resources. And then just getting into the technical parts on all the different services that they need, because there's no one size fits all, right? We have right. basic requirements within the landing zone that we create for a company. So a landing zone is really just the, the, the tenant environment that you would provision first mm -hmm. from the get go. And then there's things like setting up the, the Azure AD, similar resources on monitoring security, looking at things like key vault and uh, those sort of thing, you know, the networking and any other specific resources that you might need to get to the environment and how you will be working and interacting with the environment. So those sort of resources you'll have set up and also things like specific default subscriptions, because we're working with subscriptions in Azure subscriptions, for example, for management resources, for production test, that sort of things. And getting back to default policies and controls where we've already pre-decided baselines or company policies about what the people can do, what's allowed in mm -hmm. Azure, prevent the guys from making any mistakes and doing the wrong thing that's not really okay by the company. For any company, at least to have more than one tenant or subscription, one should be your prod, another will be at least minimum one for testing and have the best security practices. They can definitely help you to avoid any such incidents or scenarios. And when it comes to the skill set, they start with the basic concept along the line. You said, right, that if you know Windows, simple, same, just the deployment model is different, but learn the hands-on experience, how to deploy the VMs and Windows 7, learn the networking and how to make up, make your own virtual lab in that environment. This will give mm -hmm. them a lot of learning. And then yeah. the, for the experienced people, like some yeah. system engineer, network engineer, just learn the things, how mm -hmm. can it work in the cloud environment? Yeah, well, there's Any. a lot of resources, free resources on Microsoft to learn. learn the documentation websites. And the nice thing about that is it has a lot of walkthroughs people can follow. They can learn by doing. So there's a lot of exercises, samples. They can just sign up for a free trial subscription and play around and get working. And then also look up how things learn the architecture center, the bigger picture, right? So how they can, with examples of existing infrastructure, for example, if you were trying to build a multi-tier application or you want to have a website or a specific kind of service in Azure running, you could just follow some of the, the guidance on there. Right. I'll put the link for those who are watching for the Microsoft Learn. And to remind me of the discussion we were talking about, we used to develop those for MCT classes. So again, those who are watching, you're going to get the same stuff to learn from Microsoft Learn. Go through this, practice it, and deploy in your lab. And as the, the job market, there's a huge potential, huge growth. If you have the right skill set, uh, it will easily lend you a job. So any last comment before we hang up? We get what I said in the beginning, it's all about learning and sharing what you know. You know, whether it's a blog, online, social media, think about it. I always think back to when I started out, you know, I, I didn't know anything. I had to learn. 
I was following a bunch of people and their trainings. And then mm. I always, you know, there's so, always somebody that told you something that changed your life. And you never know when something that you're showing is going to help somebody out with a problem or, you know, change their life. So yeah. learn and share. I really appreciate the time again. I've not. Anytime has not. Good, good to nice say. Nice to you again. Yeah. We'll it's been sync a while. Up. Yeah. We'll sync up again and we go from there. Thank Definitely. you again. Thank you.